possible. G'day, how you going? A friend reached out the other week, wondering if I could make them a stool like this for their place. I tried my best searching the internet high and low to try and find the original maker, but this mob commune design hasn't acknowledged anyone. Anyway, let's get stuck in. Got this nice thick piece of hoop pine. Obviously it was used in some kind of structure once upon a time. Someone's kindly denailed it for me. There was this big mortise in the middle of it, which I managed to cut around, so I got three pieces out of it in the end. One third I used for the legs, and the other two thirds I glued together for the seat. Nice tight grain. I'm running these over the jointer just to get a good gluing face for the seat. The third piece, which will be the three legs, doesn't really matter because they'll end up on the lathe anyway. I just made these legs as big as I can, getting three across that board. Gluing up that seat base, I got a pretty good finish on the jointer, so there's no need for dominoes or anything. Be plenty strong enough. Here I'm just cleaning up that glue and marks from the thicknesser. This took me a while to mark out. I had the photo to go off, but only from one angle. I was trying to find something in the workshop I could use, and I had that old oil drain container. But in the end, I ended up just making this little jig to create a circle. This shape just looked a bit better. I had to put a nail in there, but what's one more nail hole? You can see there's two holes there anchor points. The distance between those two nail holes are the distance between your two final lines. Sometimes drawing out the wrong design helps you get to the right one in the end. Just marking out the locations for the three legs 60 degrees apart. You can take the time to set this up in your drill press if you want to get the right angle but this time I just felt a bit cocky and went for it. Just use your bevel to try and match that angle with the, with the drill. As you can probably tell, I um, don't have much experience in chair making, so maybe watch this video with a big old grain of salt. In all seriousness though, if you are interested, there's a book called The Chair Maker's Notebook by Peter Galbert. It's fantastic, and I only made it a third of the way through, and look at me go. feel like I got my order of operations a little bit wrong with this. Probably would carve out the seat base first before cutting out the shape next time, just so you've got a bit extra meat to clamp it to the bench. I probably should have finished that book. In that photo around the back of that stool, there was quite a big chamfer, which gave it the look of it being quite a thin seat base, but my legs are going straight through, whereas those ones were just nested up in the seat itself, so it would have been a pretty thick seat. This would have been a perfect opportunity to pull out the draw knife if I had one, but I don't. <laughs> so I was hacking away at this forever. Kept putting a little chamfer on the end there so that when I was taking green material it wasn't just chipping out on that front face. not too bad, put on a good album and just go to town, it's quite enjoyable. A lot of the shaping of this stool, especially this back perimeter bevel, 
was running across end grain, which was a little bit tricky, but you just sort of had to keep your wits about you. That seat is obviously two bits of timber glued together, so you just have to keep track of which way grain's going. But again, it's not the end of the world. You get it wrong and it's pretty obvious straight away, so just go the other way. Lots and lots and lots of card scraping on this one. I just needed to go back and sort of finesse that to get a straight, straight edge. Also looking around you can see that line there. Had some high points and low points. This was actually a pretty good way just to fix it up. Just mark it and come back with the card scraper. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just from a distance you want it to look like a nice horizontal line. Just drill in some guide holes there so I know when to stop essentially. So I'm carving out this seat. I don't want to go deeper than those drill holes. This is the first time I got to use this new tool of mine, the Travisher. There's a bit of a steep learning curve with these but such is life. This old piece of hoop pine's got a few nail holes in it so it was good to carve down and watch some of those battle scars just disappear. It's just a time consuming job, but lots of fun. I haven't really had much practice with carving seats, so this is just a bit of a learn by doing. You could use an ads or a score to do this as well. The Travisher is a fantastic tool, but really it's the card scraper that stole the show just so good at smoothing things out. Slowly getting there. I think the main thing here is you want your bum cheek grooves to be even left and right. Oh, so that's a technical term. You also want to keep that perimeter line running around the back quite sharp. I feel like this helps frame the seat and really emphasizes that groove you've made. adding a bit more shape to the seat. Just remove that section. Again a draw knife would have been great here. That's okay I've got time.
just continuing that chamfer onto the front edge. The seat's slowly starting to take shape. I haven't got heaps of experience with spoke shaves, but I recently got this Veritas one, which is a really nice bit of kit. Here's one for the brains truss though. That mouth is so small. Compared to the old Stanleys, it's got this huge opening. But I was finding the shavings were just getting stuck. I don't know if that's just how it's meant to be or if mine's a little bit off but I really don't want to get in there with a file and open it up anymore I feel like it should be more open than that and it also comes with shims which when I put the shims in there's no chance anything's getting through so I don't know let me know if you know even as it is it's really nice to use though Anyway, back to it. So here we've got the legs cut out. And they're ready to go on the lathe. I don't usually do this, but I thought I'd give it a go, just getting the one step closer to being a circle. I haven't got much experience on the lathe. I've just watched a few YouTube videos, trying to learn how to not kill myself. My main focus here was just trying to get the same diameter across these legs. High on my list of things to do is to be a bit more efficient with sharpening those garbage chisels. I think it would pay dividends. It's dusty business working on the lathe. Poor old camera. I don't know if this technique is commonly used or incredibly frowned upon. I can see where you might think it's a bit inaccurate, but I actually found standing over the piece you can line that scrap piece up and as you lean over get the red line lining up with the rest of the leg and you can just copy that line to get a bit of a matching profile so I've got the diameter set there at 19mm so that'll be a nice snug fit in the seat base and then I just Catch that angle and create that taper. This was hard to explain and hard to film, so I hope that makes sense. So now we've got three legs with tapered tenons, but we've just got regular drilled holes. So those legs fit into their holes fine, but we can get a much tighter fit by using a reamer. This reamer has the same angle that we've just put on our tapered tenon legs. By doing this you can get a really really snug fit. The beauty of this is throughout the stool's life as people sit on it again and again and again it just makes that joint even tighter. I don't know if everyone else has a box of wedges like that but sort of use them to figure out my colour schemes and I've got that bit of walnut there which looks nice with the hoop pine.
this little jig you just have a cutout just for making wedges on the bandsaw. First time sort of using it, it, it works well. The trick with these is just to make sure that the grain's running the length of the piece, not, not across, so it won't be strong enough. I just pop these in the vise and use a block plane to get them down to the right dimension. Cutting the slot, you can do that with a handsaw or just on the bandsaw. Glue it up. When you're hammering your wedges in, put the leg of the stool on the table like that and hammer it home. If you listen when you're doing it, you can actually hear a different sound when the wedge is seated. I remember reading in that book that you only want to glue one side of the wedge when you hammer it home. I can't really remember why, but I think it's got something to do with there being a chance of the glue and the mortise failing. Just as I was finishing that, the washing machine started beeping. It can be annoying having to share your workshop space with a washing machine, but handy in this case. I was washing that because I got a new filter. I'm hoping it will improve that machine, and it's a stopgap between having to buy a new one. There we go, all glued up. Now it's dried with just flush cuts or away those excess bits. You can see that's, that's a pretty fat wedge, I, I don't know, probably didn't need to hammer them in that much. I'd say, probably lucky in a way that that didn't crack or anything, I don't know. I haven't really done this enough to know where the limits are and how far I can push them. So this stool had to be 500 mil tall, so I'm just using some scrap blocks there on a flat surface just to make sure it's level. And just luckily the bottom of those legs all had nail holes in them, so trim those off. There you go. At this point, I actually thought I was pretty close to being finished. Um, always put a chamfer on the bottom, of course using that new spoke shave, which is lovely. Usually I just use a chisel, but a little spoke shave works nice. Yeah, I thought I was done here, and then I realized that that stool's got supports. <laughs> so I back onto the lathe. I don't know why it's got two and not three, or it's not in a T formation. It must just be a style choice. Not super practical, but that's what she wanted, so let's make the most of it and get some more lathe practice in. It's mostly the same process as the legs, just trying to get the same diameter all the way across the length. Our old lathe is just lives semi outside under a tarp and it also sits on decking so it's just horrible to use everything's bouncing now because I thought I didn't need to do these I'd glued everything together so I now had to freehand drill through these legs for the supports. There wasn't enough room between the legs to slide that support in, so they had to be through all the way. Look at me just arming and ironing about this. There wasn't enough room in between the legs for the drill either, so I had to drill from the outside in. I was worried about blowout, so I carved out the profile of a leg into this piece of scrap and hope that I could 
hold that onto the back side of the leg to compress those fibers so it wasn't going to blow out. You can see it did help. There's one on the left with no piece of scrap and there's one on the right was done like this. I just held it behind. And it's not bad. Just lining that laser up with the guides on the drill. I think that was probably one of the first times I've ever used those markings on a drill before. And I popped this piece of timber in just so you can see the laser mark. Surprisingly okay. The contrast between the sharp and angular stool seat base and the very simple round legs it was a bit of a leap I thought. By putting these faceted lines on the supports I thought it might help blend those together. I feel like it sort of got lost in the end, they just look round. Maybe too subtle of an idea. But that was my biggest gripe with this in the end, it was just feel like it didn't quite match. In hindsight, I should have maybe gone with a staked leg, not turned on the lathe, but that style of leg that might have eight sides, for example, just gives it a bit of a sharper look. But I sort of was needing to keep it similar to what was in that picture I was sent. Cutting the slot for the, the wedge. I'm just surprised at myself that I managed to drill those holes without too many issues. They're not perfect, but no one's gonna know. Except for me and you. Again, just gluing one side of the wedge only because I read it in a book once. Note the direction of those wedges. If they were turned 90 degrees, as you hammered them in, the grain might split running up the leg. supports coming through. I was pretty happy with that in the end. Really was a bit worried. The spoke shave is so nice. Just wish that mouth was a little bit more open. But I'll probably get used to it. I'm just used to that Stanley 151 or whatever it is. Nice. There we go. Now I'm done. Bloody shavings everywhere. I actually went back and attacked that top even more. I just thought it needed more cut out of it. Saved you guys having to sit through watching that. So that front edge now doesn't have a straight line at the top. It actually has scalloped out for your thighs. I quite like the look of that. I ended up using a little bit of filler in those nail holes on top. Just using some hard wax oil, probably did three coats in the end. There you go. Nice piece of scrap hoop pine, which came up well. It's got a bit of character with the nail holes. Sometimes I feel like when you put in that much work, you should use something a bit nicer, but at least it got saved from being firewood. And I've got a real soft spot for hoop pine anyway. It's a beautiful timber and it's native to the area. I think one of the main takeaway lessons with this stool was to not dismiss design choices because you see them as not being practical. I initially wrote off the idea of those supports. Why is there two and not three? But in the end, it's one of my favorite features. And there it is, since being packed into a box and sent 2000 clicks down to Hobart. The next time I'm down there, I look forward to putting my bum cheeks in those bum cheek grooves. Thanks for watching.